Hi, this is Chris, one of the marketers here at Gravity. And in this video, I want to play with an IoT device. And specifically, it's an Adafruit Pi portal. It's similar to a Raspberry Pi, but it has an LCD touchscreen and it has temperature sensor and light sensors. It's a great way of mimicking an IoT device. Now, we will give out five of these to the first five people that head over to the community and ask for one. We can ship it to you anywhere you are. Oh, sorry, I've got a text message. One second. Great, got it. So as I said, we'll hand out five of these to the first you know, five people that asked for it over at the community forum. And uh, definitely we'd love to see kind of what you build on the Gravity platform. So the reason I wanted to do an IoT based video is that Gravity is uniquely positioned as an event native API gateway, which means we support both synchronous and asynchronous protocols and APIs. So everything you would expect to do on the synchronous side, rate limiting, traffic shaping, security, etc., you can do with asynchronous protocols and APIs. So we can, for example, take our Kafka topic and choose to expose it perhaps as a web socket or as a streaming protocol, but not lose any of the things you'd expect to be able to do, such as rate limiting and security. That's wonderful. So it's going to be in part two of this video, we'll actually look at how we take gravity and expose that Kafka topic to the outside world. Conceptually, the architecture is going to be like this. We're going to take data from the IoT device and push it into MQTT. Now, MQTT it's a nice lightweight protocol for these RAM constrained IoT devices, but arguably not as robust with the same level of redundancy, etc., as a Kafka instance. So we're going to take this data from MQTT, turn around and push it into Kafka. And from there, in part two, we'll take the Kafka data and expose it uh, via an API so we can build a web app or a mobile app and display this data in real time. Now, fair disclaimer, I'm not an IoT expert, so why should you trust me? Well, you should trust me because I have two monitors, a mechanical keyboard, and I know how to use terminal. This video, I'm not going to go into every line of code in, in exquisite detail. Nobody really wants to be watching me code, but I will cover the major components and then we'll make this code available to download. And maybe it's going to be linked somewhere on this video in one of the corners or below the video uh, with a full blog that goes into more details and you can follow along. So let's head over to my dual monitor setup and start coding. Um, it is a Python based uh, device. So it, this is a Python script. It's pretty straightforward. You know, we start off with just importing the libraries that we need um, and then initializing the sensor. So the nice thing with this Adafruit is that it has both a temperature and a light sensor built in, which is very nice. So when the script starts, we just initialize the screen and basically all we're doing is loading an image of Newt and displaying the temperature label and the light reading label. And then we show, show our display. So pretty straightforward. Um, we have two, two MQTT topics that we are going to publish to, the temperature and the light reading. And then these are the standard MQTT functions. These are callback functions um, that will get uh, invoked as the data comes in or gets sent out. So the first thing we're going to do is just connect to our Wi-Fi so that we have an internet connection. And then the next thing is we will connect to our MQTT broker. I'm running Mosquito MQTT on my local computer and I've exposed it via ngrok. So it's available to the outside world so that this device is able to connect to it and can see that. This is all stored in my secrets file here. So you can see I have an address exposed via ngrok and uh, that's how it's going to um, access MQTT. And we set our callback handler. So we connect to our MQTT instance. And then really the code's pretty simple because we're just going to sit in an infinite loop and we're going to read the sensor data, the light and the temperature. And then we're just going to publish it to those two different MQTT topics. And that's just going to sit there in a loop and keep doing that. So this is what it'll look like when we actually run this code. All right, so we have data coming into MQTT, and now the next step is to take the data as it arrives in MQTT broker and send that to our Kafka instance. So we have that more robust instance receiving our data. 
Uh, there are very, you know, there are commercial solutions that can, you know, bridge between MQTT and Kafka. Um, this is just a simple little Node.js bit of code that's just going to connect to an MQTT instance. It's going to connect to a Kafka topic. Um, and literally just every time it gets a message uh, in this callback, every time it receives an MQTT message, it's just going to turn around and send that into our Kafka instance. We have a topic here uh, called Newt Events. And it's just going to go ahead and feed them over into Kafka. So obviously not production quality code, but it serves the purpose of transferring everything over to Kafka as it arrives in MQTT. So with all the components ready to go, this is what the final result looks like. And as a reminder, so it's coming from our IoT device into MQTT and then into Kafka. Well, that was a ton of fun putting that together. And in part two, we're going to take a look at how we can use the Gravity API platform and its event native capabilities to take that Kafka topic and expose it to the outside world without relinquishing our control and traffic shaping and everything we'd want to do with before exposing data to the outside world. I had a lot of fun building that and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.